Yo, 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 it's your boy E-Double back with another video. And as you can tell by the thumbnail, uh, I'm doing a theater room tour today. When I did my unboxing of my Sony VW17 ES projector and my Screen Innovations um, 136 inch projector screen, I promised y'all I'd do a tour of my theater room. So that's what this video is all about. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel, um, it's gonna be a lot of dope content. Um, you know, things about cars, my Audi RS5 Sportback, um, a lot of tech. I'm really into tech. Uh, just built a theater room, um, or didn't build a theater room, but just built a new house. And in my new house, I have a theater room that I'm putting together. And uh, and then it'll be like some finance, you know, like credit building tips. And um, I just recently got into cryptocurrency. So not a financial advisor, but once I get a little bit more comfortable, I'll be able to share some information. And I've already made some money, so... You know what I mean? I'll be giving some some tips on that. But yeah, uh, if you already part of uh, the double up, appreciate y'all. Thanks for rocking with me. But if you're new to this channel, you like the content, hit the like button and smash the subscribe button. But uh, without further further ado, man, we're going to go ahead and um, go go to my uh, theater room and go ahead and let y'all know what I got. And then uh, I'll also bring you back into my studio here. Uh, and in the closet is where my uh, my rack is and where all of the equipment so like the my separates my preamp my my amplifier and, and and all of that good stuff is so we'll come back in here i'll show you that and then we'll wrap it up but i'll holler at y'all in a minute deuces all right guys so this is my theater room all right so first thing first uh my room is 15 feet wide by 22 feet deep um there's uh which is 330 square feet and then the ceilings are 10 feet. Uh, it kind of comes down right here, but the the main height is 10 feet. Um, so the cubic square feet of this room is 3,300. My surround sound in my theater room, it's a, a 7.4.2 surround sound system. So the left, right, and center channel, um, I have three THX 504L speakers. They have uh, one inch tweeters and then four, five and a quarter inch woofers. Um, now the thing about these speakers is when I was looking them up online and if you go to clips.com and pull these speakers up in the product description, it said that they're THX Ultra certified um, or Ultra 2 certified, which basically means that they're in rooms that are 3000 cubic square feet or larger. Um, now, if you go down the page and you look at these speakers, you'll see that it actually says they're THX Select certified, which means that they're for rooms up to 2000 cubic square feet. I found that out after and now I've kind of been to I kind of feel like, OK, should I have got these ones or should I got the other ones? Now, I'll be honest with you. They sound like really good. Like I don't have any issues with how they sound, but it just makes me wonder that if I would have got the. Um, other speakers, which I'll show you in a sec, the um, THL, uh, THX um, 8000L, because um, you can also use those for front, left, and center channels if they would sound more full or if they would be better. Uh, the main difference that I really see between these is there's no back box on these speakers. And the, um, all of the other speakers in, in my room, in my theater room, have a back box. Um, other than that, I really can't tell the difference, but, um, like I said, they sound fine. I actually bought three additional 8,000 L's, which are right here. And I was going to sell those, but I'm kind of going back and forth on whether I want to do that or not. Because like I said, the sound is good and I don't want to deal with cutting into the wall and patching the drywall and all that again. So, um, it's kind of up in the air. So, uh, I'll just have to figure that one out. Now for my left and right surrounds as well as my back surrounds i have the 8000 uh, the thx 8000 l's um those have a one inch tweeter and then an eight inch woofer and these sound like really good like and these would be the same ones that i could use up front and then they all would be identical um as i mentioned i bought three of them that i got sitting back here i just don't really I want to cut into the drywall and all that and then I would need to sell these other ones before I would do that um, So if anybody's interested, let me know. I am a certified dealer um, get you really good prices um, I'm pretty sure I can price match anybody in the country uh, ship them straight to you um, No problems at all 
completely brand new, just hit me up. Let me know. Hit me up in the comments. Drop an email. I can reach out to you and we can make something happen. But yeah, really nice. So these are what they look like without the faceplate on. And then the uh, the ones in the back of the room. I didn't want to get up there and take the face plates off. So yeah, but that's what they look like. And so I have four of those for the surround speakers. And now for my height channels for the Adobe Atmos, I have uh, four uh, 5,000 2Ls, a THX 5,000 2Ls, and those have a one inch tweeter and then two five and a quarter inch woofers. And as I mentioned earlier, all of the speakers with the exception of the front, uh, the left, right, and center channel have back boxes. And those are actually pretty deep. Those, those, so you definitely need a decent amount of ceiling space for these uh, 5,000 2Ls. Now for the subs, I have two THX 1200 subwoofers. Now the thing about these subwoofers is when I had my room built, um, I originally was gonna do all in-wall everything. So in-wall speakers and in-wall subs. But the more I thought about it, I didn't really think I was gonna get the bass that I wanted from the in-wall subs. The speakers do sound amazing. I know there's a strong community of people who really don't like in-wall speakers and all they do is tower speakers. I wanted a more clean look and these in-wall speakers sound really good. Now, as far as the in-wall subs, I didn't think they were gonna kick like I wanted them to kick. And uh, so I decided to get these subs. Um, when they originally ran, uh, set everything up and built the house, they ran coax here. And these subs actually take a speak on connector, which uses speaker wire. So I actually had to run a, a super long speak on cable um, from here all the way back to my um, networking closet. Wasn't too bad because it's this wall, I can actually get behind this wall right here. And um, this I'm on the second floor. So I was able to go into the attic space and kind of like fish it around. Uh, what wasn't too difficult at all and then just kind of cut a hole back here and was able to run it through the back. The THX 1200 subwoofers, uh, they got 10 inch woofers. After I bought these and set everything up, I had came across a bunch of forums and they were talking about like the SVS subs. Um, I had already set these up and I really liked these so I wasn't gonna buy new subs. But um, a bit, my business partner, Pete, a good friend of mine, he, um, was in the market for new subwoofers too. And so he actually bought the SVS PB 4000s and had them shipped over here for me to try them out. So I had moved these out the way and um, put the PB 4000s in. Those subwoofers are crazy, like crazy, crazy amount of bass, like really like shake the floor, shake the room. Um, it was really nice. They were bigger than I would like, um, honestly. And um, really I, I don't, I didn't need that amount of bass. These subs right here, they are super loud. They shake the floor. Um, I don't think they're as nice, but they're pretty damn close. Um, and in certain situations, I think they're a little cleaner. Like the bass is a little cleaner. I can't really like describe it. I'm not a, a professional audio file or nothing like that, but like it, these just sound a little cleaner to me in certain scenarios. But, um, and maybe it's like the mids are like a little cleaner or something like that, but those, um, SVS PB 4000s, man, if you're thinking about getting them, like, you'll love them. But um, I'm super happy with these uh, THX 1200s, and uh, they definitely serve a purpose. And now for my screen, um, I have a 136-inch Zero Edge Pro, and then the actual screen is the Slate uh, 1.2 Gain ALR. Um, I love this screen. As you can see right now, all the lights are on, um, and you can still see. It obviously looks a lot better when the lights are off, um, but with that that uh, ambient light rejection, even with the lights on, and like these sconce lights actually kind of shine a little bit onto the screen and you like really can't even tell. Um, it, it does a good job of blocking that out. But uh, I love this screen. Can't speak about the quality of screen innovations enough, the way they ship the product, uh, just the feeling, like that little uh, felt border around it you know what i mean just everything is quality um now in my unboxing i did go over um the screen and how it comes with uh well it doesn't come with but you got two options for the backlights you can do one that comes with the remote where you manually uh change the colors on the on the remote or you can do the option that syncs up with the philips hue um i did the option with the philips hue and i kind of regret that because um 
there's a sync box that you can get with Philips Hue that you uh, plug all of your HD your, your your sources into with HDMI, and then whatever's on the screen, uh, your Philips Hue lights connected to that will change colors. Well, apparently the lights um, that come with the Screen Innovation screen they work with Philips Hue, but they don't work with like the scenes you need to create with inside of that um, the app for that uh, connect box. So I can't use these lights with that. And that kind of pissed me off, if I'm being honest. Like, if I'd have known that I wouldn't have bought these lights, I would have just bought the lights directly from Philip Hue and ran them around the border myself. And then I would have be been able to use the sync box. I'm still thinking about maybe putting some Philip Hue lights in the ceiling and maybe just like around the room and buying the sync box again and doing it that way. But but I don't know. But uh, other than that, love the screen, high quality. Um, I know there's a lot of cheaper screens out there, but... Uh, I'm gonna sacrifice quality, you know what I mean? Uh, and that, that's that's just the reality. But obviously, get whatever's in your budget, and, and you know, make it work for you. And then now, the main star of the show is the Sony VPL VW17 ES native 4K projector. Uh, bad boy, man. Um, when I was searching originally, I was looking at the 295, and I think it was the 695, which was the uh, both of those are native 4K projectors. Uh, the main difference, I think, were the lumens, and then um, the 295 didn't have lens memory, um, and I wanted the lens memory because I knew I was going to be going with the Cinescope screen, which is uh, 2.41 uh, by 1, which is the wide screen. Um, it's not 16 by 9. Uh, so I knew I wanted that lens memory. The 295 didn't have the lens memory. The 695 did have the lens memory. Um, but right when I was getting ready to buy it, the 7, 715 was announced, and then uh, it came out maybe a few weeks later. And that was before uh, they finished building our house, so I actually bought this one instead. All right, so uh, we now back in my studio, and this is the closet right here. And this is my rack. It's actually a strong FS Series 35U, uh, super nice. Um, I do wish I probably would have went with the, the bigger one to step up, the 42U, because there's a couple more things that I need to buy um, that I wasn't anticipating on purchasing when I was first designing this room. We'll go ahead and open this up, show you uh, kind of what powers everything. All right, so uh, I guess we'll start with what powers the theater room, right? Cause that's what, so this video is all about. So right here is my Yamaha M uh, or Yamaha CX-A5200. This is a 11.2 channel preamp. Uh, right below that is my Yamaha MX A5200, and that is a 11.2 amplifier. And then above my preamp is a Klipsch THX KA1000. Uh, that uh, amplifier is just for the subs, those two THX 1200s. Um, it powers those. And then just like some like multimedia stuff that I have in here. I have a Xbox um, One X, um, not the Xbox Series X, the Xbox One Series X. Um, I do have a Series X, but it's downstairs in my family room. Um, the Sony projector doesn't support 4K at 120 Hertz. And uh, my TV, I have a 75 inch Samsung Q90T, and that does support HDMI 2.1 and um, 4K at 120 hertz. So I put my Xbox down there. This Xbox does um, 4K at like 60 hertz, so it's cool for the projector. And it was my old Xbox, so I just put it in here. I'm also got a Sonos port for playing music in the theater room, and then right next to that is my Harmony Pro. 2400 um it's just a it's it's like the harmony elite um and some of the other ones but this actual hub it's larger supports poe and like has a um, further range and um, that's really like the only difference i think it has like a faster processor or something in it too that makes it a little quicker um i have an apple tv uh, uh, Apple uh, a 4k Apple TV back there you just can't see it. it's kind of tucked in the back and then uh, as far as like some of the smart home stuff I have a combination right here is the uh, Samsung smart things and then I run home assistant 
Then I have uh, a Philips Hue Hub and then uh, Lutron Radio Raw 2. And the combination of all those things, um, you know, controls the lights um, and, you know, my automations and, and, you know, all of that good stuff. Um, right here is my Rio Link NVR. Doesn't have anything to do with the theater room, but I have a total of like six or seven cameras around my house. And this is just the NVR. And right next to that is a My Cloud uh, Home um storage drive it's just a, a network drive and then um up here I, I passed over this this is a watt box it's just a ups so if the power cuts out um i'll still have power to some of these devices uh for a little while came in handy back when that freeze hit houston um i don't know if you guys are aware about that back in i think it was february um and then this up here the very top is just like a uh, basically like a controller uh, or like a status update for that watt box down there. It kind of like shows you some some information right in front. It has like some USB ports for charging and, and an outlet right there if you need to plug something in. So uh, as far as my network is concerned, which um, that helps with powering the Apple TV and you know updates to the projector and stuff like that. I have the my gateway is a Dream Machine Pro, which is that one there. And then my switch is the 24 port enterprise PoE switch. Um, the reason I went with this switch, there's actually two reasons I went with this switch. One, uh, which is silly as it is, I like the layout of the Ethernet ports. Um, a lot of the Unify um, switches, all of the ports are kind of off to the left. Like you see how these eight ports are kind of off to the right. Um, on a lot of the switches, they do that same kind of configuration, but it's like off to the left. They don't run them across. And when they came out with this enterprise switch, they have them all across, which the reason I like that is because right underneath here, I have a patch panel and they just kind of line up more cleanly um, with the patch panel. So and then the other reason is this switch supports uh, the, their Wi-Fi 6 APs and I have one of their long range Wi-Fi 6 APs. So uh, so, yeah, so this is pretty much the rack and everything that's in it. Now, um, something that I'm interested in purchasing and like trying out and to be able to offer my clients is a Lumigen. And it's basically like a video processor and does like a whole bunch of other cool stuff. Um, I'm not going to really touch on that too much because I'm still uh, trying to figure out which one I want to purchase. And then uh, I still kind of got to learn about it. So uh, once I get that, I'll maybe do another update, uh, share some information and then um, we can kind of go from there. But yeah, this is my rack. Yo, so that just about, you know, wraps it up, man. Um, I hope y'all really enjoyed the video. Um, I really enjoyed putting this room together. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm about 75, 80% done. Um, I still wanna do a star ceiling. Uh, I'm debating on whether I'm gonna swap out those center channel speakers or not. And then um, I need to get uh, some, some acoustic treatment. And I'm going through that process right now, trying to trying to pick and choose, uh, you know, where I want to place the panels and which ones I'm gonna I'm gonna buy or if I'm gonna build them myself. But uh, like I said, man, I re really appreciate y'all. If y'all have any questions uh, about anything that that I showed in this video, feel free to drop a comment down below. And um, if y'all want to see a more in depth video of anything that I showed off in this uh, video, go ahead and drop a comment, and uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, record a video on that. But uh, again, man, it's your boy E-Double. Appreciate y'all rocking out with me. Go ahead and hit the like button if you like the video. And go ahead and smash that subscribe button and join the double up. And until next time, holla at y'all. Deuces.